Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cinema Recall Podcast. Let's see if this new intro will work. From the art house to the multiplex, physical media, and streaming. Welcome to the Cinema Recall Podcast. your hosts, The Vern and Ashley. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Cinema Recall Podcast. I'm The Vern. Ashley's not on this particular episode. Uh, we're going to be meeting sometime next week uh, to hope, hopefully get her back on. She's been very busy with other stuff there. But I'm coming to you right now because I have with me my alien collection that I want to go through with you. The new Alien Romulus movie is coming out to theaters this weekend. And I thought it would be kind of fun to talk about the original Alien series that came out. Uh, I'm going to talk about each film, show you the laser disc collection. I apologize about the way uh, my video sounds here. There's going to be a lot of background noise here. You're going to hear the fan going on there. But yeah, I thought it would be kind of fun showing you all the Alien movies that I have. Uh, I'm going to start with the first one here. Really Scott's 1979 original Alien, uh, starring Sigourney Weaver and Tom Skerritt, Henry Dean Stanton, Veronica Cartwright, John Hurt, Ian Holm, Yafet Koto, uh, directed by Ridley Scott, written by Dan O'Bannon and Ronald Shosset. Uh, this one is about the crew of the Nostromo, and they come upon this planet. And they discover uh, the ship that's been abandoned. And then one of the crew members finds this aid. And then he gets this creature attached to his face. And then all hell breaks loose. Now, to be fair, folks, uh, I did not see Alien first. All right. The movie that I saw first in the saga would have been Aliens. All right. I watched Aliens a whole bunch of times had no idea that it was a sequel. So, and then when I found out that there was an alien, I was a little bit surprised. But before that, you see, while I was watching Aliens, as you can see here, uh, there was another science fiction movie that I watched a lot of as a kid, and that was Spaceballs. And there's a sequence in Spaceballs where Lone Star and Barf are visiting this diner, and there's a sequence where these crew, the space crew, have one of the members get a creature, pop out of the stomach, and that creature starts singing and dancing. So when I actually did see the iconic chest burster sequence in Alien, I was a little bit surprised that there was no uh, creature come out of the stomach there, or creature did not see a dance. So I was a little bit surprised about that. All right. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to show you real quickly here. I think... This laser disc is very cool. It's got some cool production photos, as you can see here. All right, look at that. Very cool. And yeah, we've got the cat right there. You can see that. And we got some images right there. Uh, Alien has always been a fun haunted house horror film. In fact, director Willie Scott showed his crew members uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I believe the haunting just to get the vibes of it very well. Uh, I do. You all know that originally they were going to have a male cast as Ripley, uh, but they put Sigourney Weaver in there and she just killed it. She's just so iconic and memorable. Um, all right. So after that, and I like the fact that Alien has like this very slow pace to it. It just goes and it does. It is. It's a haunted house film. It's a very slow moving feature and I love the build up very much to it. Um, even though there's only one creature in there, it's very atmospheric and very scary. I love it very much. Uh, but I will say this though, it had to be the second one that really got me to the movie very much. Uh, this is my laser disc of the special edition. 
which contains over 30 more minutes of footage. Very cool. Uh, yes. So at the end of Alien, as we all know, Ripley was the sole survivor and she was able to defeat our alien creature using her cunning ability. Uh, so yeah, very cool. Uh, although I think Jonesy the Cat had something to do with the creature or maybe help out the creature. I'm not sure, but there's that. Uh, but yeah, going on to 1986's Aliens. Uh, this one is directed by James Cameron, uh, written by James Cameron and Gail Ann Hurd. And this had to be quite the, the task, too, to make a sequel to an iconic movie and have the sequel be, by some standards there, even better than the original. And what I like best about Aliens is that how James Cameron pays tribute to Ridley Scott, because on the commentary he mentions that he really wanted to copy Ridley Scott's camera movements and his set designs. And if you watch Aliens, it looks like a very, um, how we call it here, it streamlines the movie Alien to Aliens very well, especially in the very beginning where they are rescuing Ripley uh, from her spaceship. feels very much like the torch is being passed from Ridley Scott to James Cameron. And James Cameron, at the time, you see, James Cameron was working on The Terminator, right here, which was his very first, you know, film project. He had done work on Prana 2, The Spawning, and he was hired to write up uh, Rambo First Blood Part 2, so he was hired to do the script for that. But he's working on The Terminator. That movie got released to uh, very high praise. And the executives at 20th Century Fox says, hey, you know, we've got this movie coming out soon called Alien 2. And James Cameron, like, ball popped in his head. He says, you know what? I can make this work. I can put together a sequel. And the sequel takes place many years later. Ripley gets rescued. Uh, finds out that they've been colonizing these planets where these alien creatures have been living. So she teams up with a bunch of Marines and the cast of this one includes, uh, if I can find them on here, uh, I know that Bill Paxton is in it, and Jeanette Goldstein is in it, and Michael Bean is in it. Michael Bean, who was in The Terminator, returns back to the Aliens. And this one, very different, much more of an action adventure. Still has some horror elements into it, but not as much horror elements as Alien. Alien is more haunted house, and Aliens is more of a fun roller coaster ride. Love it. I love all the action. I love the dialogue. Uh, I even love the uh, little girl. Uh, I want to say your name is uh, Carrie Hen. I'm going to mess with the name right now, but the, the Newt, the Newt character. The actor who played Newt, it was her first role, her first and only role that she ever done. She hasn't done any commercials or TV shows or anything like that, and she just nails it in that performance of Newt. Uh, very cool. So Gordon Weaver was nominated for an Oscar for a role as Ripley, very first for science fiction horror films, and that was very cool. Uh, to me, both of these are actually really cool. Alien and Aliens are my favorite. If I watch these, if I watch the trilogies of the series, I'm watching these ones First of all, again, uh, shout to the Parkway Theater because they had both screenings of both of these movies on the big screen, and that was so cool. I never got to see these movies on the big screen because, hell, I was a kid. Uh, but I want to show you real quickly here. My laser disc has these cool little booklets, and what I love about laser, laser disc, here, there's the cast you should see here. <coughs> <coughs> All right, uh, so yeah, uh, Bill Paxton. Oh, I forgot about Lance Henderson, who plays Bishop, the android. Uh, Paul Reiser as uh, Carter. Uh, I've known Paul Reiser from the show Mad About You, mainly, but I know many people to see him as the a-hole Burke in Aliens. Uh, but yeah, uh, very cool there. And also, you give some liner notes about the making of the movie. And then this special edition, too, like I said before, this is the one that has all the stuff that was cut out of the theatrical version. And this laser disc also has 
some very cool, and also it's kind of cool too, on this laser disc, you get to see all the stuff that was cut out of the theatrical version as well. You can see the liner notes for that, and then you got some of the photos on there. Very cool. Love this very much. Uh, but laser disc, I don't believe this one has any commentary tracks. Stay interviews, so if you want the commentaries, you got you buy the 2003 special edition of that. So, there you go. There's Alien and Aliens. Uh, moving on now, because after Aliens became such a success, the studios were like, well, can't do more of this. All right, we can't end this shit now. Uh, which is kind of sad, because Aliens ends on such a strong note. I mean, you can watch Alien by itself, and that ends on a strong note, too. And you can watch Aliens by itself, and that ends on a strong note, because, you know, the hero survives, and everything's fine. Uh, so that's why I think Alien and Aliens for me is just like one long movie. It's one long Ripley story. She goes through hell in the first one and then comes back triumphous and victorious in the second one. So enjoy the hell out of that. Uh, then we come, sorry, then we come to Alien 3. Now, Alien 3, as you all know, was the debut feature from David Fincher. Oh no, am I still recording? Okay, sorry. Uh huh. Ah, uh, all right. I'm back on here. Okay, sorry. I thought I lost something here. So, David Fincher would go on to make seven, but here is the Alien Three. All right. Uh, and in Alien Three, Alien Three does the biggest disservice to a movie that I've seen in the beginning of Alien Three because at the end of Aliens, and I'm I'm, just, I'm sure if you watch this video, you've seen all the Alien movies. It's the first four. They're older movies now, so if you haven't seen these movies yet, that's not my fault. So, at the end of Aliens, you know, Newt and Hicks and Ripley and Bishop, they all escape, all right? They're able to get out, you know, and Newt has that one great line, can we dream now or can I dream now? And Ripley says, yes, I think we all can. Perfect, perfect ending, wonderful, everything's done, it's wrapped up. Well... In Alien 3, all right, everyone but Ripley dies. And they die off screen. They die in like a little like during the opening credits, all right? You see that an alien got onto the ship and killed every single one. How that happened? No idea. It's not really explained, but everyone is dead except for Ripley. And Ripley's ship lands on this planet inhabited by prisoners. And the prisoners include, you know, Charles S. Dutton and Charles Dance and this. Lance Henderson does come back as Bishop, but he's there just mainly for plot exposition. And he's there to tell, you know, Ripley that, hey, guess what, girl? There's an alien inside your stomach, all right? You are going to be, you know, giving birth to an alien creature, all right? So it's gonna be the end of your stuff. So the third one, is trying to match the tone of the first one because it's set in just one location, this prison planet, and it's just one alien creature. And alien creature is there to like, you know, kill off everyone. Uh, there's an alien creature that plants itself inside of a dog. Uh, I know there's a director's assembly cut and the alien creature plants himself into something else. Uh, but the big spoiler is that Ripley has an alien inside of her and is going to die and basically at the end of that movie has to sacrifice herself. Uh, I know that David Fincher had a lot of issues making this movie. I uh, had issues with the studios trying to make this a thing and there's been delays and whatnot. In fact, if they made a documentary about the making of this movie, it would be very fascinating. In fact, it was because of Alien 3 that I did find out that there was an alien. Because for years, I've seen aliens, all right? And then I remember my dad got this three-pack that had alien, aliens, and a sneak preview of Alien 3. And I said, what the hell? There's an alien? I have no idea there was an alien. That's amazing. So it's because of this movie that I was able to see aliens. And I'm very thankful for that. So that's cool. All right. Now... Couple minutes here. And I forgot to mention too that after Alien, Ridley Scott would make my other favorite science fiction movie of all time, Blade Runner, 
was pulling the VHS for you here right now. Uh, and he's even said, too, that in the commentary for Alien, that Ash, the uh, android that goes crazy in that, is replicants. So, yeah, the Alien saga and Blade Runner are very much connected. All right. So now, after Alien 3, everyone said, okay, that's the end of it. But Alien 3 made a good amount of money. So the studios were like, fuck it. We got to do more of this shit, all right? We got to bring Ripley back. How do you do that? She's dead because she sacrificed herself at the end of Alien 3. How are you going to bring her back? Well, easily, you make her into a clone. And I am going to show you that this Alien Resurrection is probably seen by a lot of fans as the worst of the franchise. But for me, it is one of my favorites. It's very different. The tone is substantially different. Uh, this comes from director Jean-Pierre Genot, or Genet, uh, who has done the movie Amelie. Uh, he also did the uh, feature with Mark Harrell before that, The City of Lost Children, and Delicate Contestant. Very cool. If you've seen The City of Lost Children and Delicate Contestant, and then watch Alien Resurrection, you can totally tell the similarities between them. Uh, and in the fourth one, uh, Ripley does come back, but this time she is a clone, and she is bo the she's born mainly to host an alien creature. And in the fourth one, you have this crew that comes in to uh, transport her, and the crew includes Ron Perlman and Dan Hedaya, uh, Brad Dourif, and Winona Ryder. Is in this as well, and a uh, movie was written or movie was written by Josh Whedon, and you can totally tell there's like a Firefly aspect to it. There's a lot more comedy and lightheartedness, and I absolutely enjoy this movie very much. I think it is a bad rap, but I think it's actually really kind of fun, especially after the third one, which is kind of dour. It's trying so hard to be Alien, but it's not going to be Alien. It's it's fine. It's not terrible, but I love the fact that Alien Resurrection just adds, you know, fun. Uh, Ripley is not who she is in the other movies. She's a clone. Very different story. Uh, there's a lot of, like, strange but funny uh, sexual innuendos with the creature and the uh, Ripley. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, very fun stuff, but I, I just try to enjoy the crew banter. Uh, is it a perfect movie? No. And that's the cool thing, too, about each of these alien movies, because each of them have their own different directors and their own style. I mean, Alien 3, uh, very much Fincher. I mean, Fincher definitely has his own style to it. Uh, same thing if you look at, uh, go back up here, to Aliens, uh, James Cameron, especially after coming off of The Terminator, he has his own style to that. Uh, Ridley Scott, also very much his own style with Alien. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of it. I just wanted to talk really briefly just about the Alien movies and what they've sort of meant to me. I love them. I still rewatch them. I'll rewatch Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection, but I really love Alien Resurrection even more, folks. I do. Uh, so yeah, so the new one comes out, Alien Romulus comes out this weekend, directed by Fetty Alvarez, who did the Evil Dead remake, that was good, uh, no, not the, they do the Evil, there's still be Evil Dead ones here, the one with the mom, or the, I don't even know what the hell name of that one is now, like, Evil Dead, am I gonna look this up now, he did that, uh, that's going to bother me now. Fetty Alvarez. I, mean, I know he did the Evil Dead remake. And he also did, uh, I want to say, oh, what the hell did he do? The um, Don't Breathe. He did that one. That was good. And there's another one. But when I saw trips for Alien Romulus, it reminds me very much of old school Alien. And the fact that he's bringing in some practical effects is going to be very cool. All new cast, all new story. So I'm curious to see how it holds up. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be like a combination of both Alien and Aliens? You know, have the horror element and then the action element to it. I don't know. But if you've seen it, 
Let me know if it is any good. I'd be curious to hear what you think about that. Uh, but yeah, so there you go, folks. That's my quick little review about the Alien movies and just my random thoughts about them. So thank you very much for watching this. Very cool. Uh, also, really quickly before I do go for it, and I'm sorry to do this, but I'm going to look this up really fast here if I can. Uh, give me one second. Because I found out from one of my cast members, because I'm in the midst right now of editing an audio drama presentation of Reservoir Dogs. So putting that together soon. That should be coming out hopefully by the middle of September, the end of September. So that's going to be very nice. So I found out from one of my cast members on there that there is whatever whatever dear friends. Um, his name is Kev Smith. Uh, he is a podcaster, a, a YouTube host, and him and his family are having some difficulties right now. And he's asking for any type of donations or sharing because his family is facing hopelessness. And I know that you all have helped me out in the past. And so I'm going to be sharing his GoFundMe information on our website, cinemarecall.net. So be sure to go there, give what you can. Even if you can just share stuff to help him out, it would be really grateful if you did that. Also on our website, cinemarecall.net, you will see <laughs> written reviews I've made of all the Alien movies. These are the first four Alien movies. So I give you a little bit more detail about them in that review series. So if you go to our website, cinemarecall.net, I'll have written reviews for these movies. It'll, I'll give you links to uh, an earlier website that you used to have, and so you can view them on there. And I'm also going to post links to our, our friend, Kim Smith, to help out his family, uh, do what you can. Uh, appreciate you watching this video very much. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, whatever you gotta do. Uh, but I thank you very much for watching my little laser disc reviews on the Alien movies. What is your favorite Alien movie in the whole trilogy? Uh, did not cover Alien vs. Predator or uh, the prequels they had there, the Prometheus and Alien Covenant did not cover those movies. I'm pretty sure there's other like fan books. Uh, I know there's like other comic book adaptations too, like Aliens versus Robocop or Aliens versus Terminator. Uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy versus Aliens. I'm pretty sure they have that there too. Uh, but anyway, folks, love you all very much. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I do know over on our audio feed that you find the podcast on. We're going to be posting a couple more episodes there. And then I'm taking a little bit of hiatus from the audio podcast portion. There still may be some video portions here uh, later on as things go on. But uh, yeah, anyway, folks, thank you all for watching. I am The Vern, and we will see you again soon. All right, bye-bye. All right, later, everybody.